that if you take a patient with a common cold, otherwise well, comes in, sees a physician, primary care provider, and that physician, this is a double-blind study, so they, it's a control group that they did this with, and you have the physician just say, oh, these are your symptoms, I think you have a cold, this is what you need to do, goodbye, hope you get better, fine, perfectly nice, but attending to the physical world using physical sight versus someone who in my terminology would use mind sight, that is, they say, oh, you've got this symptom and that symptom, aren't you a student here at Stanford? Yes, and isn't this May, aren't you having final exams? Yeah, oh my gosh, here's the 30 second difference in this group. This must be really difficult for you to be studying for exams and having this cold. Wow, it must be really tough. Now, toughness is a subjective experience. I understand this is a feeling of being challenged. So in that study, guess what happened? One group, you think about which one, got over their cold a day sooner and their immune function was much more robust, even though it was just a 10 minute visit with a 30 second empathic comment that was made. Which group do you think got better, faster? The empathic group, exactly. So what we can say now is that empathy is not a luxury for physicians. Empathy is a fundamental part of the system we're going to analyze. Well, what's the part in a relationship that the medical professional needs to take? It would be the word part, which stands for these four elements. P of part stands for presence. We can now study the idea of a clinician or any human being being present for another person. There's a whole, we have a whole book in our series about it that's about 400 pages long. There's a whole long line of scientific reasoning that's really fun and exciting to talk about, but the take home message is this. You have a receptive state of your mind that allows you to receive things without judgment. Some people like to overlap with the concept of mindful awareness. So in our research center that I helped co-found at UCLA where I, I do my clinical work, we know that mindful awareness is a way of developing presence. Now presence allows for the second aspect of part, which is A, and that's attunement. Attunement is the focusing of attention on the inner nature of a person. It's usually used to mean interpersonal attunement, but I believe that mindful awareness is actually a form of internal attunement. So attunement emerges from presence, so you tune into the internal nature of another person. That clinician who was giving that 30 second empathic comment was present to realize this was a student, attuned to the internal world, and probably did this, the third aspect of part, which is R. What do you think it might be? Well, it's resonant, resonating. To resonate means, if I'm that clinician, I don't become my patient with the cold who's facing final exams. I feel their feelings, they sh change me because of what I'm experiencing in my attunement, because I'm present. So resonance is like a guitar string. You don't become the lower strings if you're a high string, but you resonate with them. And this is where the phrase, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, happens. Instead of two individuals in a clinical encounter, it becomes a we. This is everything. We is created from presence, attunement, and resonance. And what does it create? It creates the fourth aspect of part. When you're present, attune, and resonate, literally in the nervous system of the individuals involved, and again, we have Book, entire books devoted to this thing. Trust. Trust is created as a researcher Steve Porges has beautifully talked about something called the social engagement system is turned on and all sorts of physiological things that Jock Pengsepp and Richie Davidson and all sorts of other people have talked about. I mean, if I, people say, why didn't you give references in your 30 minute talk? And I'd say, I'd be like this all the time with you know Jones and Smith and Frank and, and Hilleman over here and I'd be doing that. So there's references behind everything I'm saying, but this is a conversation, not a book. 
so you're not getting all the references, but these wonderful researchers throughout the world have told us basically, and when you rearrange what they found, presence, attunement, resonance, and trust is the fundamental part we play when a relationship is integrative and healing.